Hey guys, welcome back to Woodshop Confessions. So today we're going to be making some upper kitchen cabinets for the kitchen remodel that I'm working on. So let's get started. Safety first, right? I'm sure you'll notice my level of protection might vary from time to time. So when building cabinets, I start off by making the face frames first. I just find it's easier to make the face frames and then build the boxes to fit them. You can see on the sketch up of the face frames that the stiles and lower rails are one and a half inches wide and the upper rails and center dividers are three inches wide. I start off by ripping the one and a half inch parts first. I am using pine boards for this project that I purchased from the big box store. I decided on pine since these cabinets were going to be painted. Once all these parts are ripped to width, I take them over to the miter saw where I cut them to length. I always make sure that both ends of a board get a good clean cut, and that's just to make sure they are both at exactly 90 degrees. I'm not saying I don't trust the big box doors, but you can only learn that lesson the hard way like two or ten times. You'll find out just how important this is to having a square frame when you go to assemble them. Also, I find that as I'm cutting multiple parts down to different lengths, that I need to take my time and organize the parts into groups. Then lay out those groups to double check that I have all the correct parts. There's nothing more frustrating than finding out you didn't make enough of a certain part. And now to ripping stock to three inches for the remaining sections of the face frames. Then back to the miter saw for cutting them all to length. Now that all the parts to the face frame have been cut, it's time to put them all together. I use the Craig pocket hole jig for assembling face frames. This is Craig's K5 pocket hole jig. I've mounted it to some plywood with French cleats so that I can store it on the wall out of the way when I'm not using it. When it's time to use it, I just clamp it to the table, hook up my shop vac, and start drilling some pocket holes. Now every part of the face frame doesn't get holes, so make sure you separate and set aside the parts that don't so they don't uh, accidentally end up with some extra holes. Not that I've ever done that. Now I always use at least two pocket holes when using this joiner method. So both the one and a half and three inch boards will get two pocket holes at each end. The assembly is pretty straightforward. A little glue on the joints, the rest on my pants, and away we go. I clamp each of the joints to my work table and then check for square. It's a good idea to clamp the joint before screwing in a pocket hole, just to make sure the two work pieces won't come apart and shift as you screw them together. It's because of the angle that the screw is entering the wood, it has a tendency of shifting one of the pieces that can kind of cause an alignment issue. Craig does sell several types of clamps to help with this, and I have a couple, but only use them when my table isn't convenient. Now the length and type of screws depend on the type and thickness of your material. I am using a one and a quarter inch coarse thread screws since I'm using three quarter inch thick pine. Now just keep on repeating this process for each joint and making sure to go back and occasionally check the frame for square. For the two frames that have the center style, Make sure you take the measurements from each side of the frame. This is going to help you to make sure you have that style perfectly centered. This of course will not only help with the symmetry of the frame, but will also make it easier on you when it comes time to make some doors. So just like the outside joints, when attaching the center style, I go ahead and check for square again, and then put the last couple screws in to complete the frame. Once all three face frames are done, it's time to move on to the next step of the project, and that's to make the body of the cabinet. So let's go build some boxes. For cutting down full sheets of plywood, I set up a work surface using a couple saw horses, an extra sheet of plywood, and then a two inch thick sheet of insulation foam. 
The work surface helps by giving full support along the entire length of a sheet of plywood. This is a really helpful system since I do most of my work myself. I use a track saw, but you can also use a circular saw on a straight edge and get the same results. I have tried to wrestle full sheets of plywood on my table saw, but just end up messing up the cut and wasting a bunch of wood. I definitely recommend planning out your parts when using plywood. This will make sure that you have as little waste as possible. Now I use a program called Cutlist Plus, which not only helps me plan out my cut list, but also has several other planning features like figuring out how much material you're going to need and figuring out the overall cost of your project. Now remember, here I'm just ripping down the sections to manageable sizes so then I can cut them down to final dimension later on with the table saw. Since I'm so far away from my shop, I don't hook up the shop vac when I'm cutting in the driveway. Well, looks like their compressor will just have to handle that. Once all the long rips are done, I break down the track and get ready to make all the shorter cross cuts. With all the sheet goods cut down to manageable sizes, I'm back in the shop and ready to cut them to their final dimension. For this, I rip them down to width on the table saw. For cutting panels to their final length, I use my cross cut sled on the table saw. There's multiple ways to make these cuts, but I've just found that it's the easiest and most accurate way for wider panels. Once all the panels are cut to length, I switch out the table saw blade for the dado stack and then clamp a superficial fence to my table saw fence. I am cutting a 3 quarter inch dado that is a half inch deep to fit the 3 quarter inch back panels into all the other panels. The superficial fence is just so I can have the blade right up against the fence without damaging my table saw fence. Now it's back to the Craig jig and time to drill some more pocket holes. I am drilling pocket holes along all the front faces of the panels to join the face frame to the cabinets and along the sides of the top and bottom panels to join the cabinets together. Again, I carefully lay out the panels to make sure I put the right holes in the right parts. Since these cabinets are going to be painted, I can plug and then sand smooth any visible pocket holes, but I still try to place pocket holes to where they aren't openly visible in the completed project. Assembly of the cabinet boxes is pretty straightforward. The key thing here is to make sure your parts are aligned and square. Once again, my multi-purpose table comes in handy for this. I also use Rockler's clamp it squares to give me an additional surface to clamp the work pieces to and give me a good 90 degree angle to reference off of. Once everything is lined up, I add some glue to one side of the joint and then clamp it down. All that's left now is drive in the screws and then repeat for the other sides. Before you know it, you've got yourself a box. Once I've completed all four sides, I go ahead and check for square again before moving on to the next box. Now that the sides top and bottom are attached, it's time to give it a quick sanding before we measure and then cut out the back. This is definitely one time in your project when you'll discover if your box is in square. I wait to cut out the back panel till now to just make sure I cut it to the correct size. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood for the back. This adds rigidity to the cabinet and it also gives a good strong surface to mount to the wall. The back panel gets glued and then nailed using my brad nailer. Finally it's time to attach the face frame to the cabinet. 
I put down a bead of glue around the front edge of the box and then center the face frame with a quarter inch overhang on the bottom and sides. Then I drive in the screws in the pocket holes along all four sides. So in about 10 minutes flat, I was able to build three upper kitchen cabinets. Now to install and paint them. Thanks for taking the time to join me on this build. Please like and leave a comment. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. My next project will be the shaker style doors for these cabinets. So I'll see you then.